Example 2 is going to use the NT coordinates, or the normal tangential coordinates, because we're given information about this hill that our motorbike is moving on. All right? So when we're giving information about the curve, we're usually going to use the NT coordinates. So we have a motorbike. It's 800 kilograms is its mass. It's moving with a constant speed. So constant speed means speed is 80 and speed dot is 0. We're supposed to determine the normal force the surface exerts on its wheels when it reaches point A. All right. So point A is still on a slope. Right? It's not a big slope, but it's still on a slope. So let's draw, I'm going to exaggerate that slope a little bit. Here is my motorbike. Okay. All right, that's a little bit too much. Let me try that again. All right, so if that is my motorbike, I've got a normal force, I've got a weight, and um, since the wheels are rolling, we're not worried about friction. It's not sliding. All right, the slope here, if we extend this line, right, has some slope theta. We're going to need that theta because that theta is also relating us. This theta is the same theta up there between the weight and the normal force. All right, so the weight is mg. Normal force, we don't know. And so we're going to have to find theta at some point. We're also going to have to find, if we're using NT coordinates, if we go back up to our equations, we're going to be using the center, these center equations, right? So AT, this is AT, so there's no tangential acceleration. AN is V squared over rho. We don't know rho, we don't know the radius of curvature at A, but we do know that we know the relationship between y and x, so we're going to use the expression rho is equal to, uh, let's see, 1 plus dy dx squared to the 2 thirds, no, to the 3 halves, divided by the magnitude of the second derivative d squared y dx squared. All right, so that'll give us rho. How do we find theta? Theta is, all, is the slope of this curve. Well, to find the slope of the curve, we're going to take the derivative of the curve. So let's start then with that expression. We've got, start over here, y squared is equal to 2x. That means that y is equal to the square root of 2x. Right, take the derivative of y with respect to x. The square root of 2 is just a constant, and this x under the square root, we can rewrite this as the square root of 2 times x to the 1 half. Right, the square root is 1 half. So then we have 1 half x to the negative 1 half, and we do it again, and we get the square root of 2 times one half times negative one half times x to the negative three halves. All right, at x equal to 100, then dy dx is equal to 0 0.0707. At x equal to 100, dy d squared y, the second derivative, is equal to negative point zero 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 three five four. All right, this is our slope right here, the dy dx equals slope. Change in y, if we're looking at this angle, right, so change in y is going to be over here, change in x is going to be over there, so this is the tangent of theta. Okay, so from that, then we can get theta is equal to 4 degrees. So not very sloped, but still sloped. 
four degrees. All right, let's go back to our free body diagram. If our coordinate system, we've got the tangential direction, which is along this direction, and we've got the normal direction, which points this direction, inwards. All right, so N is along the normal direction. MG is not along either of the two directions. This is tangential, this is normal. So if we're going to sum forces in the normal direction, because the tangential is just going to be zero, nothing's happening in the tangential direction, Fn is going to equal N, N would be negative, plus Mg, if that's theta and that's theta, then it would be Mg cosine of theta is going to equal mass times the normal acceleration, which we said was v squared over rho. v squared over rho. We need to find rho, right? So we found all the parts to rho. We can plug them all in. Yet rho is equal to um, 1 plus 0 0.707 squared to the 3 halves divided by this really, really small number, 0 0.0003453 squared is equal to 2,849 meters. We also, this is in, the 80 is in kilometers per hour. We need to convert that, which we can do. We need that in meters per second, because um, that's what the G is in, right? All right, so we should have all the parts we need now. So we're going to have that N is what we're trying to find determine the normal force the surface exerts on the wheels. All right, so N is equal to mv squared over rho minus, sorry, let's change some signs, mg cosine of theta. Plug all those numbers in. Our mass is 80 or 800. Velocity is 22.2 squared divided by uh, rho, which is 2,849, negative, plus 800 times 9.81 cosine of 4 degrees gives us something like 7,967 7, newtons is our final answer. So once again we have, well we didn't use kinematics so much in this one, we've got the force equations here, we had to do some differentiation to deal with the fact that we don't didn't have a radius of curvature, we had the expression for the, the curve, so we did some derivatives to do that, we found the slope from those derivatives and then we found the radius of curvature, and we plugged things in.